Our mission, Helping Parents Heal, is a nonprofit organization dedicated to assisting bereaved parents. Through support and resources offered, we aspire to help individuals become shining light parents, meaning a shift from a state of emotional heaviness to one of hopefulness and greater peace of mind. Helping Parents Heal goes a step beyond other groups by allowing the open discussion of spiritual experiences and afterlife evidence in a non-dogmatic way. Helping Parents Heal affiliate groups welcome everyone, regardless of religious or non-religious background, and encourage an open dialogue. Attendance at all Helping Parents Heal meetings is voluntary. All discussions that take place at affiliate-led meetings are confidential. We hope that participants will learn from and share with each other. Zoom meetings run by HP, Helping Parents Heal Leadership are not confidential. These meetings typically feature guest presenters that are posted on YouTube so that affiliate members worldwide can watch and benefit. Neither type of Helping Parents Heal meeting is designed to replace traditional therapy or spiritual counseling. Helping Parents Heal offers a wide variety of speakers, allowing parents to learn about many possible ways to heal. This includes presenters covering progressive topics, such as afterlife evidence and connecting with children who have passed. The views expressed by our guest speakers may or may not reflect the opinions of Helping Parents Heal leaders and members. So we ask that you take from their presentations whatever may benefit you personally. Thanks, Kathy. Thank I'm you. just going to read a very short bio for Pauline. Um, Pauline writes that she has been touched with the gift of clairvoyance since she was 12 years old. Her psychic abilities have developed further over the years, and she works now as an international clairvoyant and medium. She travels across Great Britain and Europe, giving private readings and spiritual healing. Her work involves spiritual teaching as well. Her greatest pleasure is witnessing the joy on people's faces after offering guidance and delivering messages from their loved ones in spirit to help people on their journey through life. We'll put Pauline's um, address uh, in the chat. And also you can find her on the Helping Parents Heal website under recommended providers. Um, I will turn this over to Pauline. When she gets started, if you can take all of the validation she is given, giving, please type them in the chat and then Kathy and I will find you and we will um, bring you forward to speak with Pauline. Without further ado, please welcome me and Kathy in welcoming Pauline Mason this afternoon. Hey, Pauline. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it's a great honor to work for you, um, to, to be able to help people um, as I needed help when I lost my dear father. So for me to do this is, is just fabulous. And I just want to share something with you. I did a reading last week for a, um, a couple and their daughter was absolutely amazing what she was coming through and telling me. And uh, she showed me the colors she liked. She showed me the food she ate. She showed me how she liked her hair done uh, and the warmth that she felt for her family. And uh, the, the parents were very, very easy to work with. But the, the reading went on and I carried on giving information. And then at the very end, I said, she, she's holding up these two things for me. I said, and it's like blue and sparkly. And her mother went, oh my goodness, her name was Blue Diamond. So when the kids can do that type of stuff, it's just mind blowing as to how it affects me, the parents and, and everybody else. So um, I just wanted to share that with you. So be open. Um, if there's things there you understand, but you understand quite a bit of it, then, then come on board with me. And um, as I start to prepare myself for this evening, um, during this afternoon, I had a, a really lovely young man come and join me. And I would say he was between 20 and 30. Uh, lovely face, very, very good looking, but not, not a smarmy good looking, just a good bone structure. Um, he had nice eyes, good teeth and hair. Um, his hair was a brownie colour and, and he showed me that he was falling and I could see his hands holding on but I could see him losing his grip um, and he lost his footing and he made me aware that he had a green jacket on or would have owned a green jacket, um, a beautiful smile. So I don't know if anybody can understand this beautiful young man who would have fallen.
Kathy, you want to unmute? I understand all of that. Who am I talking to? It's Kathy. Where are you, Kathy? Wave at me. Oh, my Kathy. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Oh, my goodness. This kid was so good looking. And I just, and I'm just so thrilled. Have I got the age right? Is everything right in there? You have the age actually perfect. He was 20 when he passed and he would be 30 now. Fabulous. Fabulous. I want to cry. Um, and, and did he lose his footing? He did. He fell from a pretty good height. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, you know, he, he says as, as he comes in and I feel he was quite an athlete, athletic type as well. Yes. Uh, and, he, and he looked as though he got good boots on. So whether he actually did climbing or, or, or what he was doing, but hardworking and, and real clean cut boys is what I want to say about him. And he, he reaches out to you and he, he brings a heart to give you because I do feel he was extremely close to you. Yes. yes. You understand that? I can understand he, all of that. Um, he smiles to be recognized. But I see a book here as well, Kathy. So are you writing a book about this? I am told often that I have at least one book to write <laughs> and I have not started it yet, but I have done a little bit of a blog. Good. Do do it because this will help other people in this journey of, of the loss of kids, of everybody, really. It does help. And he's just so excited, but he's a bit of a prankster as well. Do you understand that word prankster? Oh, yes. And he's put his finger up and he's got the world on it and he's spinning it as fast as he can. And he said, I can go anywhere. It's amazing. And he talks about meeting up with a grandfather as well. Yes. He talks about that. He gives me a heart shape as well. So have you got a locket? Have you got something that connects you to him? You've got the locket on. Fabulous. I stuff. have a heart. Yeah. <laughs> Good. All right. And did he like to drink beer out of a bottle? Most likely. <laughs> Um, he he, um, he went through a time of his life, he was telling me, where he wanted to be in the shower and changing his shirt quite regularly. Is that something that, that you would have said, hey, you're showering too much or something else is going on here? But, <laughs> um, yeah, well, yes, because you said he was athletic, so he was showering all the time because he would do things and need showers. And, yeah. <laughs> and he, he, he pulls his hair. Have you actually got some of his hair, Kathy? Yes, I do. Good, good. I don't ask me why we want it. I've got a little pot of my mum's and my dad's and I just needed to have it. Yeah. Um, and he's laughing at that. And and I see the scissors coming in to cut his hair and, and he's, he's, he's laughing at me again. Very particular about himself and how he looked, but not to the effect where he was over possessive. Hey, look at me, because he wasn't like that. I can hear loud music. I can see a lot of chrome here. So did he have a bike or is this on a car or a truck? He had a car uh, and he had a bicycle as well. Yes. Mm. Yeah, he, he talked both. about the crown. And uh, has he got younger siblings, or was he yes. the young? There's he younger, has, yes. younger siblings here. Yes. And he he said his his life was a bit of a roller coaster. He was a chancer. He took chances at many many things in life, uh, but he said this one didn't pay off. And um, he he wants to reassure you that he's around you. He's so close. And yes. just reach out and you know he's there. It's like a breath of wind that goes past you. And that's his way of saying, I'm here. Um, he he shows me a big dice. Do you know what dice are? They've got uh -huh. no yes. Yeah. So did he have a big dice anywhere? Did we have these dice? They, yes, they played a lot of um, games. And some of the games had like dice with like 16 sides and 32 mm -hmm. sides. So yes, they and he carried them in this like little tin. <laughs> Okay, and he tells me he was good at maths. Very good. Yeah, he's, yeah, he, he was excellent at maths. And did he work in a grocer's a grocer's store for a while? Um, no, not no, he no, not a grocery no. store. He, he's he, he's put on like a brown overall. I don't know what this brown oval means, but I just thought it was like like a wooden shack or place he was working in. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm, I'm going to leave that with you. I'm so thrilled. That was the first one. And Kathy, thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much, Pauline. That was beautiful. Thank you. You're very, very welcome. How exciting is that? Okay. So the, 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 um, the, uh,
the next child that came in she was a little girl and I, I want to put her between three four I don't think she was as much as five she was fair haired and uh, um, the feeling I get with her is that her organs started to shut down and she became very tired and listless I'm not even sure this wasn't a, a, a terminal condition with this little soul because I, I see her hair disappearing and um, she um, uh, she was a happy little girl. She there would be a photograph of her at a birthday party, and I, I feel that's quite important. This photograph of her at a birthday party. So, does anybody understand any of this? And if I've got age wrong or things a bit wrong, I'm quite happy to work with you. If you can take this, if you could type it in the chat. But you know something. This picture of a kitty at a birthday party. There's a special picture of her. Okay. Cool. So, um, Kara said daughter was petite. She had cancer, lost her hair, and she was eight when she passed. Right. So because I saw, I don't need to cheat at anything. I saw like they put a little scarf around her head because her hair had gone. So I, that's and her, I, that's her birthday I, is Thursday, Pauline. So fabulous. fabulous. Okay. okay. It, it, if I've got the age wrong, I'm sure. very sorry, but a very petite, tiny little kid. Yes. Hi, Kara. Can you speak so we can find you? No. There you are. Hi. Hi, hi, Cara. I was very drawn to you, actually, when you came on the screen. Um, so uh, have you got a, also photographs of her at birthday parties? Yeah, we were actually just looking at a few. Yes. Good, good. Yep. Right. And and does that make sense, what I've said? this uh, She became tired and listless. Um, yeah. But I don't want you to remember that. I want you to take your mind to when she was bouncing about and 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 I can hear her screaming with delight at different things that she would have loved. She shows me sparkly lights and things that would have kept her attention. So can you can you accept that? Um yeah, we actually when she was in the hospital, we would bring kind of like one of those light globes. You yeah, know, we projected on the yeah. Okay. And and I want music playing. So did you play music as well? Yeah. Okay, that's very important. And um and I and I just feel this little face was so tiny, so beautiful. Um as as she comes in, it, it and, and was this um was it almost a massive organ failure that 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 occurred through Her this? cancer just spread all over. Yeah. All over it was just, it okay. was super quick. It, there was a little bit and then there was a lot. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and, um, but before any of this, she was a happy little girl. And, um, then she tells me about this picture at, at the, um, at the birthday party, but she shows me dolls as well. And I want to be nursing dolls, almost like a little mummy with her babies. Yeah. Yeah. Do, yeah. do you understand yeah, that? They... But then I see her reaching, reaching out and touching a dog's nose. So was there a dog she liked, a particular yeah. dog? You understand that mm -hmm. and um she's so emotional it's very hard for me to keep this emotion back because i shouldn't be showing it but she's so emotional to be here and uh, she's got a hand of an older lady with her as well it's an elderly lady that stands next to her yeah, probably my mom my mom um, would your mum have knitted jumpers and things like that when you were all growing up yeah, she was a home ec teacher back when they had that. So she did all the sewing and stuff. So. Oh, that because I, I see that and she's standing there and she's got hold of her really, really tight. And, and, and she comes to say that she's never alone. So never think of her alone because that's how some people think they've gone and they're alone. They're never alone. And, and I do feel that there's lots of, I want to call them little shrines around your house where you live and places you go to there's a special tree that's attracting me as well yes we a rainbow eucalyptus in our backyard so okay so reason she's coming here today um it, obviously you say her birthday's just coming up mm -hmm. Very cool. um, so so she wanted to sort of to step in to make sure that you celebrate it and and i 
you know, to help me get over grief, I would still buy my mum and dad birthday and Christmas cards. That helped me. So I don't know if you do that, but but still buy her those cards. Still talk to her as if she's just sitting on the settee there by you. Um, but a very, very warm, warm kitty. Do you live anywhere near snow or did you take her somewhere where she could play in snow? I'm, we live in Florida, but we went up to Cleveland where I'm from a little bit and they have snow. Yeah. Uh, and did she ever play in this snow? Mm, maybe once or twice. She just shows it to me, so I know she would have experienced it. But she also shows me a seesaw. So with this health issue, I do feel it was up and down. And there would have been a time that it would have given you false hope. She's coming through it, she's coming through it, and then crash down it would go again. And it was the immune system that was really affected by this. Did they give her bloods? Because I can see blood as well. Yeah, like too many times. Yeah. Yeah, blood's up there as well. Um, and thank you for everything and, and to just try and smile, try and smile. And, um, you know, when I first came on, I, I, I got Carly. Well, I know Carly belongs to Irene, but is there a Carly in your family? Um, I'm Kara. I You're mean. Kara. That'll do me. That'll do me nicely. All right. Thank you so much Thank for you. taking this beautiful little soul. But she's she's been here with me quite a long time. So she's she's with your mum, so don't worry. She's okay. I asked her to come visit you. Did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I told them three o'clock today. <laughs> they, they, no. they do, yeah. But the um the first one I um uh, the other lady's son when he came in that was very early on, he was the first one in. But that's lovely, so I'm really thrilled oh, to have you. Wonderful. <laughs> And Kara, what what is your daughter's name? Her name's Addison. Ad Addison. Addison. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Thank you. Now, now you see Thanks there's a connection there. I've got to say that to you, Kara. I have um family and that's their surname, Addison. Oh, really? Oh. There's definitely a connection. And I was talking to uh, the daughter of that family today. So bless you. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're very, very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get back to gallery right okay lovely stuff good stuff all right so um the, the next uh, the next one um um i've got a car accident here um and all all i've all i'm getting here is i'm seeing somebody coming out of a window that's that's what i'm seeing they were thrown um um but I feel this car tried to swerve to miss something. I'm also seeing a tree, so I don't know if they crashed into something like that. Um, and that's all I got on this so far. So it, I, I'm wanting to say there was possibly three in this car, but one was thrown through through a screen and was fatally injured. Okay, so um, Mara is saying, yes, there were three and her daughter was in the car accident so so it was a would you like yeah would you like mm -hmm. um okay well let's bring Mara on and you can decide if you think that it is her um because jessica is saying she has three as well so i don't know if you want to give more information so we have two people with three in a car accident three in a car accident um but it has the, the the girl has to have come through a window that's that's what i felt happened okay um i'm so sorry um mara and jessica but can either one of you uh take that um mara said possibly and jessica also said one may have gone through the window so i don't right okay i either of you ladies uh with the girl um i i don't want to blanche her hair's brown okay if you could please type that in the chat mara and jessica mara said brown i'm waiting for jessica's reply Uh, Jessica said 
dirty blonde brown. Okay, let's just work with it. Was there a tree anywhere near this accident? Uh, Jessica said, yes, I'm waiting for Mara to come through. She thinks so. So I don't know if you want both of them on, if you want to speak to one and then the other, Pauline. Um, I, I don't mind. I really don't mind because I, I, I need it to get to the right person. But th this is interesting. I'll explain after when I finish working with 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 both of them, if you like, I'll, I'll try and work with both. Okay, so Mara, if you can please unmute. Okay, Hi. Kathy, if you can spotlight and then I will get Jessica also. Hi. Hi, Jessica, can you unmute? Okay, um, here's Jessica. Okay, and we have to add the other spotlight, Kathy. I okay, think we I can do it. three. Okay. There we go. Here we are. Right. Hi, everybody. Hi. So, I mean, this could be two coming in. So let's let's let me work and let me see. Um, what was there any uh, arguing that day before this happened? Either of you? Sabrina was in college, so it's hard to say what her day was like. We weren't with her. Okay. Well, we okay. weren't arguing. Oh, we weren't arguing. We weren't I mean, arguing. I don't know what Sabrina was doing, but. <laughs> okay. I, d I just could hear. How, how about you, Jessica? No, you don't understand that I'm bit. I'm arguing that I'm aware of. No, let, that's fine. Okay. Let, let's just work with this. Okay. And I do see a tree, but, but I see this vehicle swerving almost out of control. Um, yeah. Well, we had, there we, were two vehicles involved. The one with our daughter in it and the one that hit the car. Where they wound up, they wound up into a tree, we're not sure. We never went by the site. Okay, uh, Jessica? It was one vehicle uh, which swerved at the very last minute before it hit the tree. Thank you. Okay, there you go. That's yeah. where I need to be. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So uh, as, as I get her closer to me um, and uh, she shakes her hair and, and she just looks and, and I do feel that she was a really bright young lady. So Pauline, I'm going to uh, pause for one minute. My child is actually a son and it was three boys who were in the car. Well, five boys in the car, but um, it may not be for me if it's a young lady. Okay, it's it's definitely a girl that, that was injured. It's okay, yeah. Sabrina. Oh. Thank you, Jessica. Sure, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, so, um, but you don't understand the tree because I kept we, being shown a big tree. We oh. don't know, we never went to the site. She was oh. in college. And she was in honor college, so she was extremely intelligent. Yeah, highly intelligent. Highly, highly intelligent. intelligent. Yeah, um, she made the honors. Um, but she she had a funny side to her. I want to say there was a funny side to her. But yes. I want I want to be uh, very very active. Her mind was on the go constantly, and and she could study and do it. But she didn't have to study like some kids. It was almost a photographic brain that 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 took her to the top. Took her to the top, and and she's she, you know she said that it, life was exciting and fast, very very fast. And this incline that she shows me here is a, a progression of of the exam she was taking and passing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was yes, incredible. She, it, life came easy to Sabrina. Yeah. Absolutely, because she didn't have to study like these other kids. Mm -hmm. um, but but she's she's here today to just sit down. And she sits on the floor and just looks at me. And she was also quite linked to the simple things of life. She didn't have to have the dearest perfume. She didn't have to have the best of clothes. She liked it, yes. but she had a thing. She had a thing about shoes. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, a bit like me, really. Loads of them, and uh, she she laughs at that as well. And now she's showing me her legs, and she's saying to me, "I had good legs, very good legs." <laughs> um, and I I feel she's calling herself leggy, but she doesn't look leggy to me. But she says I, I had good legs. Um, she she could almost do anything she wanted, but she also gets hold of a screwdriver. So I don't know if you call them screwdrivers, but I feel she could do stuff like that as well. 
fiercely independent fiercely independent she draws the letter a does that mean anything to you a her brother andrew thank you all right and um as she, she's making me draw there she's showing me a tent so did she camp did you like to camp or do stuff like that um before the accident she, uh, she went glamping right um, glamping, i understand glamping posh tents uh -huh. Yes, so she um, became um, a sorority sister and they took her glamping they, right. instead of a tent. <laughs> but that was one of the last activities that she was on before the accident. Okay, but was she also extremely good at gymnasts and that sort of stuff? She, she, well, she was, was athletic. She played uh, volleyball and soccer. Right, yeah. okay. Right. She was tough. And she didn't yes. take prisoners. She tells me, I didn't take prisoners. When she was out to win, she wanted to win. Yeah? Yes, yes. <laughs> that's yes. her. Um, you, Mum, she just gently wants to kiss your face. I don't know if that is what she did. She, she wants to kiss your face. And you, Dad, she wants to scratch your head. So I don't know if you pulled at your hair. Is that the tingling I'm getting right now? <laughs> um, but, but I know that she's putting music on that, rocks you when it starts and you think yeah that's her she's in and they can do all sorts of things but mainly it's electrical stuff that they mess about with yes yeah and and do you have um uh, anything like a dream catcher up in the house i was just Not staring at it yes yes there's several of them around the house right she talks about the dream catcher. And when she actually showed me the tent, it was almost like what, what the uh, North American Indians would have slept in, a TP, a proper TP. So whether she was interested in, in the First Nation people, I don't know, but she's certainly pulling my attention to it. And do you have large uh, birds of prey where you live? I've been seeing a lot of hawks. Yeah, it's like a big yeah. eagle I'm seeing. Yes. Oh, and whenever I see it, I always think of her soaring. That's good. Yeah, good. Because she's as free as that bird. And they don't have this body that we have. Uh, they're just specks of dust. And they're not sitting up there on the clouds. They're all around us. And I want to say to you that she's she's all around you. She shows me a spade in a garden. So did she like to dig? or? Yes, so. Uh... She has an older sister where we used to uh, put a tomato garden and flowers and all that stuff. And we're getting ready to do it in New York, in Long Island. Probably in the next week or two, we'll start planting. Mm, fabulous. And who who's linked to these big trucks that she's showing me? Big trucks. <laughs> um, I mean, all of her cousins have trucks, like Ram trucks. Is But is, is that what you're seeing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, all that. of her cousins have ram trucks. And I have a pickup truck too, big pickup truck. So You've got a big yeah. pickup truck, good, okay. And is there an extension going on somewhere? Somebody extending their home? We just did, um, and then her brother, Andrew, it will probably be extending his house soon. We've been talking about that. Yeah, she shows me that, but she said it's <laughs> rocky, make sure the Make sure it's correct. <laughs> spirit level on it. Not like I would do it. Um, but very, very happy to be here. Um, quite a character. Quite a character. She shows me a big G as well. A G. Hmm. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. Big G. A big G. And it's almost like it's on the back of a jacket. Nothing's coming to mind uh, right yeah. now. Don't worry, it'll probably come mm -hmm. after, but I'm, I'm going to leave her love with you. Um, thank you so much. I thank hope you. I to lift that weight away from you. Um, you. Tomorrow's her birthday. Oh, so it seems like it's a big birthday week for some of us. Celebrating yeah. <laughs> yeah. style. Celebrating style. Fabulous. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Wonderful. So happy for both of you. <laughs> Fabulous. That was beautiful, Pauline. Yeah. It's fabulous energy tonight. Good. Um, all right. So the next one, um, I, I need an accident which involved a car and water. And I feel the car entered the water. Um, I feel there were two in it and they both drowned. 
and there's something about a special ring so there was a special ring on somebody's finger that's all I got that on that that's totally all I got so does anybody understand that a car accident and it involved the car going into water and I actually got a man and a woman both drowned but there's a special ring that connects them to somebody else if anyone can take that please put it in the chat and then we also know Pauline that you know this has happened before that people watch it when it's up on YouTube and then they can connect with it yeah yeah that that that's okay because I can I can move on if nobody can understand it but I just saw the car going in the water and just disappearing in okay I don't think anyone's taking it. Okay, I'm going to move on then. I'm going to move on and maybe that one will come up somewhere else. Okay. Um, uh, th this, this next one stopped me in my tracks a bit. It, it was a, a young man who was quite bright and clever. And he was very successful in life, but he hit a really bad depression and couldn't turn it around. Somehow he talks about California. I don't know if he went there, lived there, or connection there. Um, he suffered a broken romance, and he couldn't face his future life. So he took control, and he stepped from one world to the other. Um, and his family suffers still to this day. Does anybody understand this? Um, it looks like Pamela so far can take it. Her son, Eric. California, depression, suicide, Christine says she can also take all of it. Mm. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll, I'll go back over it. So um, as he stands even closer to me, um, he was so bright and clever and he's so successful in life. Um, I feel he was quite good with uh, computers and stuff like that. He knew his way around it. Uh, but he was always ready to step out and help other people as well. Uh, I need to put that that in here as well. And I've just heard the name Clive. I don't know if there's a Clive connecting here. Not necessarily his name. I don't know if anybody understands that. But definitely has to be California then. Um, and this broken romance and he couldn't face his future life. So he took control, which was very, very sad. So do both of you understand all of that? Okay, so now we have three people saying they can take all of it. Um, Pamela says that there was a broken relationship. Yeah. Um, and then we have Christine also taking and Katrina. I don't know, Kathy, if you can help me with this. Yeah, I'm looking because we've got uh, Danny Valdez is also saying, well, she's saying possibly. Um, Okay, so um, Christine and Katrina, can you take that uh, broken relationship as well? And California, there has to be the California connection for everyone, correct, Pauline? Yeah, yeah, because that just jumped in, California. I've just got it written on a line on its own. Um, he was quite a healthy lad. He was fit, healthy, um, had everything going for him. But he couldn't, he couldn't, sometimes people are so clever that they, they get stuck on feelings and, and, and I feel that he couldn't, this broken romance was just terrible for him. Okay. Looks like Pamela and Christine M. Um... Yeah. I think it's it's either Pamela or Christine, but I don't know. Right, just let me go back and, and see if he'll show me anything else. Um, I, I do feel he was bright, but I do feel he could turn his hand to other things as well. Um, uh, fixing things, sorting things out, um, lifting the bonnet up on a car. I think you'd call it, do you call that the hood? <laughs> lifting that bit up, <laughs> looking there. Um, we call it a bonnet, um, but but I want a really happy-go-lucky guy, um, and he 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 moved through life really well, and he achieved such a lot. 
Um, and I do feel there's possibly a scarf or, or a hat, something to do with him that's still in the possession of his family. Okay. So does that help at all? War hats to work. Do you feel drawn to one of them, Pauline? They could um, start, it, and if it's it, not, um, was he also able to do manual work? Can I just ask that? Okay. Pamela's saying yes. Okay. Because I'm Being just. Uh, no, I've got to have California in yeah, the hat. No, I, I, I want somebody able to also do manual work. I don't know if he did manual work, but he's just showing me his hands, and these are these are hard working hands. Well, maybe we'll bring Pamela, and if you don't feel that you're connecting, okay. Um, and Katrina is also saying her son built computers, so I'm not sure. Right. Okay. Um, all right. So Pamela, I'm going to ask you to unmute, and we'll see if Pauline feels this is for you. If you could Hi, talk. Sorry, my camera's not working, but um, Pauline, you brought him through once before with the hats and the California thing. Did I? Okay, well, I can't remember that. I can't remember who I've worked for yesterday. They just take it out of my head. Okay, so um, he hands me an apple to give you. So normally I get that from father to daughter, but he would have been the apple of his eye. So we must have been extremely close to him. Yes, and we had apple trees in our front yard. Right, that's fine. Apples in the front yard, all right. And as a kid, would he had, we call them scale electrics, these things that whiz around on a track at home. Um, he, he liked action figures and things like that. Right, okay. Um, and he, he, the main reason I think he's here today is to get you to understand he's at peace. Can, okay. can you accept that? Yeah. And take, take from this reading the memories that he's left you with. Mm -hmm. And did he make something while he was at school that you've still got? Um. I can't think of anything in particular. Um, I'm I'm wondering the person before me said they had a hat very significant. Um, so I'm not sure. Maybe it's not for me. There's nothing he built like that. That that other person would that other person understand that? Can can she answer? And who is this, Kathy? It, is that? It looks like. Um, is it Camille? Has she couldn't hear no she couldn't um have you kept some uh, uh, can 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 she hear me now so kathy camille said she can take everything except california hats at manual work so oh, i don't know katrina okay. katrina is saying uh that is significant um Christine said her son built computers, so I'm not sure. Katrina, okay. Katrina is also saying her daughter has her son's hat. Right, okay. So I'm now being taken to the Golden Gate Bridge. So is there memories of that bridge? Um, Eric did have, uh, he lived right where he could see it and walked by it all the time. Right, okay. Um, and who's that's talking to me at the moment? Oh, it's Pam again, the original one. Well, then I'd, I'd still feel it's for you, Pam, because okay. he wouldn't give okay. me the Golden Gate if it wasn't. Okay. And, and um, do you go and look at this Golden Gate Bridge? Um, we go out to California all the time now because our other son's there with our first granddaughter. And we stay right near the bridge where we walk under it all the time. And that's very important to him. That yeah. bridge seems to be sort of like the bridge between the two worlds. Is that how I see it? We oh. If, if you look at it that way, it's the bridge between the two worlds that he's now creating for you. And you can tap into this energy, he's telling me. So whether you're gifted or learning or trying to understand it, this mm -hmm. is what I feel this is all about. And 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 also he would have bowled. Temping bowling, do you call it? 
Um, he did do some bowling, not a lot, but he yep. had some. Still have done it. Still have done bowling, and um, he shows me his drawers a total mess, and then they're all tidy. Is that you that went in and tidied them all? <laughs> Probably, yeah. Okay. All right. So that's what I think this is about, and the Golden Gate Bridge and um, a joining of the two worlds like that Golden Gate because it's nearly always surrounded in mist, isn't it? And it's mystical yeah. anyway, a magical place. Yes. Um, and, and he's as free as a bird, and you mm -hmm. must hold that in your mind. You know, mm -hmm. um, he's absolutely free as a bird, and nothing, nothing will hold him back. And he will make you know that he's around, I promise you that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Beautiful. Thank you. Right. Okay. Uh, this next one. Um, um, right. Thing I've got to. I, I just got, if nobody understands it, I'll leave it. I just got a soldier because he's in uniform and he lost his life fighting for his country. He looks quite young, uh, he looks quite a big guy that he's got not no hair showing at the back, so he would have had his hair all shaved off. And he just stands there with a the gun looking at me, uh, and that's all I've got on it. And um, he's in camouflage kit, um, he, just really clean cut guy quite tall I, I want I want to be possibly six footer so that's all I got on him so does anybody understand this lad we'll wait to see if you could type it in the chat if you can take this please I do, I do feel uh, he was awarded medals for his bravery um, It, it 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 almost feels like it was the call of duty, but it wasn't his, let's call it a shift, like you go to work this time or this time, but I do feel he was filling in for someone, doing extra work, and um, he lost his life. And that's all he's telling me, but he stands there smiling. Okay, I don't think anyone in the group can take it, Pauline. Okay, then I'm gonna I'm gonna move on again then. All right, so um, right. I, I just want to turn over and go to this one. I, I, I've got an elderly man here who steps forward holding the hands of a small boy whose transition was very fast. Uh, he brings him forward to talk to his mother, very expressive little face, big eyes, holding tightly to granddad. Um, but I do, I do feel this happened quite quickly. He's not telling me how it happened, but the grandfather stepped forward to get hold of him. Um, so I just want to try and place this one if anybody understands this one. Oh, oh. I got someone there. All right, we have one person saying she can take this. Armaine, okay. I think she. Uh, message me directly, possibly by accident. She said her son was 10 and passed very fast. Right. Okay. Danny, was your son young when he passed and your dad or his um, grandfather is on the other side? He was in his teens. Um, Charmaine has said again, she said yes to passing young. Okay, Kathy, you want to ask her to unmute? I guess she's not. And it, okay, yes. Charmaine. Okay, I've asked Charmaine to unmute. Okay. Hi, Charmaine. Hi. You can talk. Hi, Charmaine. Oh, look, you've got that Golden Gate Bridge behind you. Um, thank you for coming forward. Um, so you understand that his grandfather was in the spirit world and this child transitioned really quickly. Yes, my son passed very quickly in an accident um, almost five years ago. Right, okay. Um, a very expressive little face. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
in England, we call him a little pickle. So um, a, a kid that was full of it, absolute. I want to be full of it. I want to be a torment, a tease. I, I, I want to, but I want to climb all over you. So I want quite an affectionate boy as well. Yeah. Yes, he was uh, very charismatic and full of energy and yeah. life and love. Okay. Um, and you, I'm going to say this to you, Charmaine, you talk to him every day. Every day you talk. Is there a music box as well? Is there some significance with something that plays a tune? I don't know particularly about a music box, but he loved music. He loved music. There's a particular tune that, that I can hear being played here. And, um, and he's showing me his shoes, his boots, like his trainers. So did he have lots of pairs of these? He was a Cub Scout, so he had hiking boots. Mm. Um, and he only ever wanted the best. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and he also had rain boots that he loved wearing when he was little. It didn't matter if it was hot or cold. He'd always be in his rain boots. His rain boots. We call those Wellingtons. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so as he comes dancing in here, and there's something about Christmas, you put something on the tree that's memorable to him. Oh, goodness. Um, Christmas is really special in our family. We uh, celebrate uh, a traditional Danish Christmas every year. Okay, but is there a certain, something special that comes out at that time of year connected to him? Um, no, I'm thinking. Um, there, every uh, Christmas Eve, we go to church together for a candlelight uh, mm -hmm. service. And one of my favorite pictures of him is holding the candle with just this look of awe on his face. Mm -hmm. And beautiful. I share it every year. Yeah, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. He has a tear rolling down his face. And he says to say to you, don't cry, don't cry, because he's allowed to cry, he's allowed to cry. But but he's he's quite um, animated in, in how he's come forward with all of this. But this happened so quickly, nobody had a chance to even begin to try and understand what was going on here. Did it he ever a, complain of a headache to you? Um, it, he... He had seizures. Um, that's not what he passed from. It was a, a rollover RV accident. Um, and I know that the weight of the slide out of the RV was on top of him, so he couldn't breathe. But when you mentioned earlier about a hat, there is a very significant hat associated with his passing um, and his older brother. It was a hat that he um, he wore all the time to support his older brother and his sports endeavors. And the accident occurred when they were on their way to Texas to see my older son participate in the U.S. national football team. But, and I had to find that hat in the wreckage. Okay. And that really was like my first miracle from heaven was I felt like I was divinely guided to find it in piles and piles of debris around the RV because the RV looked like a flatbed. But you have to understand also that the spirit world give you these signs to help us, to move us, to help us understand things. But he's gently singing to you as well. And, and, and I felt he liked to sing. He was very animated. But he's full of life and energy, jumping up and down. And, and I feel that uh, he was a climber. And what do I mean by that? I don't mean he climbed mountains. He climbed about in the house, got on things that he shouldn't be getting on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he was very you, agile. Yeah. He loved you know parkour. What, what a Rubik Cube is? I'm sorry, what was that? Do you, know, do you know what a Rubik Cube is? Yes. He must have had one of these because he keeps holding it up. He did. Yeah. And he said he was quick at it. Good. <laughs> color blue. He wants to keep giving me the color blue. So I hope that means something to you. Yes. My favorite color. Good. Perfect. All right. So thank you very much for working with me. I'm so glad we managed to um, get.
get this the, get this sorted out. Um, and, Thank you. And working with me and bless you. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you. That was beautiful, Pauline. So <laughs> happy for you, Charmaine. We have time for another. Yeah, I've got I've got another one here. It's um a little girl who was between. I want to say between four and five, very pretty hair. She shows, she smiles and shows me a bump on her head. And I'm not sure if this was a tumour or if she hurt her head. She had very beautiful eyes and holds her hand up as if she wanted to be picked up. She screams with laughter and that is how she wished to be remembered. So, so this is a little girl. And if I've got the age wrong, if you can understand any of that, but I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it could be a tumour. It, it could also be she bumped her head, some sort of head injury. Okay, we'll wait to see if anyone can take that. If I've got the age wrong, I'll, I'll accept it older, but there seemed to be a bump on her head. Um, and I don't know if she banged her head or if this was the start of a tumour. But she had a screamy little voice as she's shouting at me. Okay, Laura. Laura, did your daughter, Laura Rochi, her daughter had a genetic disorder. Was there something that would show that there was a bump on her head? Um, Kara, you did a reading for Kara and her daughter had a large bump on her head. Okay. Already. So um, I've, done well, I've done that one. Okay, so nobody mm -hmm. understands this little one. Laura is um, saying that I guess her daughter's genetic condition had, um, she had odd facial features is what Laura is saying. No, I didn't see that. I didn't okay. see, that. but I wouldn't see that with the children. They don't show me that. No one? No, I don't think so, Polly. Okay, can I just go to Peter quickly because his daughter's been with me since I saw his face sure. come Green. Hi, Peter. Can I talk to you? Oh, hi, Pauline. Oh, absolutely. Thanks very much. Um, as I was just pulling in and out of the energy there, she said, now, do it now. So I'm going to do it now. So I was going to come to you at the very end, but I'm going to do it now. And it is, it is the end. And is, is there a big decision that you've got to make, Peter? Or have you made it? Um... Well, probably quite a few uh, decisions. I have been contemplating retirement, um, and um, the others are, are relatively uh, small decisions. I think, like getting a um, a cat guard for our car and stuff like that. But um, hmm, big decision. Yeah, I think that's probably um, um, the retirement. Um, yeah, <laughs> that is a big decision. But but she cut. She comes forward to sort of express and tell you. I, I feel that you gave your all to this girl, absolutely gave everything you had to help her through life. And even when she became unwell and started to slip down, the support is what she's wanting to talk about here. Um, we, we don't realise how much we help the spirit world by the support that we still give them. Uh, pushing them forward and making them go on and uh, she puts almost like a school teacher's hat on her head and, and a cape round her <laughs> so I know that part of her work is still to teach to, to bring other people up and get them to understand the values of life and who they were to value who they were and here today to basically say thank you but Peter there has to be an anniversary or a birthday coming up around this time uh, not necessarily her, but in the family. She shows me a birthday card, so I do feel there is a birthday coming. Is this in May? May. Oh, May. Um, yes, my wife had a birthday uh, this March 16th of March. 
Okay, so um, that's gone, yeah. May, goodness. May. Um, She's wanting to talk. Well, actually, it's our, it's our winning anniversary in, in May, May 12th. Good. Do you know he's forgotten that, everybody? He just forgot <laughs> that. <laughs> so, so um, Peter, I want, I want to say that to you. But there is a particular photograph that you have up of her, and, and I see you just touch it or look at it, and your thoughts are there. But she says, don't let this hold you back in life. There's still loads more you can do. Hmm. Oh yes, yes, yes. There's um. Well, actually, I'm in her room now. Um, but and and there are uh, certainly photographs of her in in the room here. Yeah, and and know that love, how deep that love is. Um, and I I need to give that to you. Is, is there a new baby coming or being born soon? Um, I wish. Um, my uh. My son's been going out with the same lady for over four years, but um, they haven't gotten married or talked about children yet. Um, never say never. Marriage, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never say never, because she's just shown me a tiny baby. Um, oh, I hope so. Yeah. Um, so that'll put a smile on your face and make you make that decision. It's time to retire. So you, yeah. you take the love this girl comes with today, and thank you very much for allowing me to work with you. Oh, thanks very much, Pauline. I really appreciate that. You're welcome. Beautiful. Thanks very much. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Pauline, I think we have somebody um, taking the little girl you were talking about with the bump on her head. Um, right. Yeah. Lil Jana, I, I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, but she said her daughter bumped her head when she was four, and that was their first visit to the hospital, but she passed at 11. Right. Okay. Can I bring her forward? Yes, of course. Okay. I have asked her to unmute. Yeah. Hello. There you are. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can, and I, I can okay. see you as well. Definitely a bump on the head was what she drew me to. Yeah. Yeah, actually, it was her first, um, let's say, hit. <laughs> and this was the first thing that we went to ER with her. It was a huge bump on, yeah. on, on her head. She fell um, and hit at the door of the bathroom. Right. And uh, interestingly, I was sitting at the moment, I was sitting on a toilet yeah. <laughs> watching her. My husband uh, ran and uh, picking her up, the bump was uh, like growing yeah. really hard. And I was screaming and that's all I can recall maybe maybe that is something i can i, yeah. I relate to to that okay and I, she had pretty hair a smile lovely smile yeah uh beautiful eyes that's what she tells me beautiful eyes she liked to dance she was forever racing about was she a bit accident prone as well did she bump into things well uh she was very careful and cautious so i wouldn't say so but she was very active and mm, then dancing active. playing yeah. volleyball uh playing piano yeah but i, I do yeah. feel when she was little she would put her arms up for you to pick her up she loved to be picked up and then no sooner okay. was she up she was struggling to get down again because she thought she was missing something she screamed with laughter that's what i hear this screaming lovely little voice coming out here and she that's what she wishes you to remember but i see her little feet and she, i feel this girl liked to dance as well definitely it was her first love yeah she loved to dance and i want to be patting a ball as well she was she was very agile in in things she could do and nothing would beat her and, and you'd say let me help and she'd know i can do it i can do it i can do it um but here today to just remind you of these things and i i we set celebrate easter i'm sure you all do as well with easter eggs and and she talks about easter eggs so was there a funny story with an easter oh gosh egg? sorry it was one of her favorite favorite activities and i just wrote today uh, i'm alone uh painting decorating the eggs this year because my son is not <laughs> that interested in it and she was really into it i wouldn't have to do anything she would do all by herself yeah doing it with wax with uh i don't know decoupage or anything you mm. 
want it. She would love to do that. Yeah, that's the Easter egg. So that's that for me, that's the icing on the cake now. So bless you. And I'm so glad that I could bring her forward to you. And you take Thank that you love. Very much. And, um, just so much love and the beautiful, beautiful child. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're very well. Wow. That was amazing, Pauline. Beautiful. Oh, Liana, we're so happy for you. And please, anyone, um, the people that got a reading today, please send us a picture of your child and a small paragraph about your reading um, with Pauline. Send it to Elizabeth so it could be part of the newsletter. We love to have validation stories in the newsletter. I think Kathy put it in the chat. You can send it to Elizabeth at www. Dot, uh, well, the website's helpingparentsheal.org, but Kathy, you put Elizabeth's email address, elizabeth I'm at helpingparentsheal.org. And she'll put it there again. There it is. Wow. Thank you, Pauline. This was awesome. What great validation stories. And again, even if you didn't get a reading today, just hearing the stories, a reading for one of us. Um, is a reading for everyone, proof that our children are with us. They're still right here. That, that is and correct. You, can, I, can, can I just add, if you do want to book a reading with me and you send me money, yes. please send me an email to say you've sent that money and who you are. Because I get this money dropping in and think, well, I don't know who the hell that is. But if you have <laughs> booked a reading or you're going to book a reading, please send me an email or make me aware that you've, you've sent money and then I'll get straight back to you. Well. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Pauline uh, will be back on the first Tuesday in May, May 7th. She does this for us once a month. We do take a break from it in the summer, but she'll be back on May 7th. You can join us tonight. Uh, we have another reading with Kathy Behrens. And uh, Thursday evening, James Van Prague is going to be our guest. But thank you, Pauline. We love you. This was just a fabulous hour. And we ask everyone, if you please unmute and say thank you. And um, goodbye, and we'll see you later. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Pauline. Pauline. Thank, thank you, Pauline. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.